Well, we want to thank everyone for coming here today. Um, we'd like to take this opportunity to provide you all with an update on the status of the Taurus Smith homicide investigation. Uh, before we begin, we want to thank the family for their patience and cooperation. Additionally, we'd like to recognize uh, some of our law enforcement partners, uh, the Appleton Police Department, Milwaukee Police Department, Waukesha County Sheriff's Department, Outagamie County Sheriff's Department, the ATF, Wisconsin DOJ, and the State Crime Lab. These agencies collaborated with us in providing services and expertise necessary to charge Percy Sims with a 41089 in connection with the Crystal Torres Smith homicide. This news conference will be more of a statement than a Q&A session. I apologize in advance to everyone, but for the integrity and subsequent prosecution of this case, it just has to be that. There was a tremendous amount of time, energy, resources, that have been put into this investigation. As all of you are aware, the, file, the charges were just filed today. As you are all aware, on June 8, 2015, Torres Smith was found deceased in a vehicle in a parking lot at the Lambeau Cottage, 2487 Nicolay Drive in the city of Green Bay. She was the sole occupant and appeared to have died from multiple gunshots. This, this area was immediately secured. It was secured as a crime scene and an investigation ensued. Based on statements uh, throughout this investigation from multiple people, we learned that Crystal Torres Smith was there at that location to deliver two ounces of marijuana. Torres Smith's phone records also indicated she was communicating with a phone number that we learned belonged to Percy Sims. For the record, uh, phone records also indicated that Percy Sims was in Appleton, Wisconsin. He then traveled to Green Bay in the early hours of June 8th and to the area where Torres Smith was found deceased. Some same phone records also indicated that her phone was also found in that area and following this homicide traveled also south to Appleton along with Mr. Sims. Percy Sims was taken into custody on uh, June 11th by the Green Bay Police Department with assistance from the Appleton Police Department. At that time he was taken into custody for an outstanding probation and parole warrant. During the time of his arrest he was in possession of two cell phones. One of them was registered to him the other to the victim in this case, Torres Smith. Detectives subsequently searched uh, a residence that he had been residing in at Appleton, and the detectives recovered a Smith & Wesson 9mm semi-automatic handgun. The bullets found in this gun were consistent with the shell casings that were found at the crime scene. Subsequently, detectives took a statement from a person that has known uh, Percy for many years. And this person revealed to us that Percy himself told him that he had killed Torres Smith, that he had taken her marijuana. And Sims reasoned at the time that he did this was he was worried that Torres Smith knew people that he knew as well. Percy Sims was interviewed multiple times by our detectives. He admitted to knowing Torres Smith. He initially claimed that the second cell phone that we recovered on him when the day he was arrested was his but then later changed his story and said that he got it from someone else. In an interview, Sims finally admitted to killing Torres Smith and that he was the only one involved. Some of Percy uh, Sims' clothing items that detectives recovered were also sent to the state crime lab. These things were sent there for analysis and Torres Smith's blood and DNA was found on his clothing, further linking him to the homicide. At this time, Mr. Sims is being charged with first degree intentional homicide, armed robbery as a repeater, and a felon in possession of a firearm. Some other information about Sims is he has a long criminal history. Some of those things include three counts of armed robbery, operating motor vehicle without owner's consent, receiving stolen property, and resisting and obstructing police. That's our current statement for this investigation. We will open up for some very limited questions. You just have to understand though too, and I'm going to repeat like I had stated earlier, in speaking with our detectives, and again, the tremendous work that they did, this is still an ongoing investigation. It is not done. It is being charged out. However, there's still more work to do. And in just speaking to them, uh, they reemphasize the fact that some things just can't be said, can't be told, uh, but will come out in time in the prosecution and in the case criminal complaint has been filed, and um, with the assistance of, of some of our detectives, I'll open up the floor at this time. 
since he was in custody on, on the probation hold, did you have to wait for, um, I guess, results, uh, the test results um, from the crime lab? Is that what kind of the lapses on, uh, on the charges today? Yeah, technology played a big role in this case. Okay, so he was taken into custody on that probation parole warrant. We had time on our side uh, to evaluate the information and make sure that our, prosecutor, our, our case was thorough. And so, yeah, when it comes to using technology, there is some time that we need. So, yes, the analysis of, of some of the things I had mentioned take time. Chen, could you elaborate on, on what Sims' motive was for this? You know, again, we would be speculating. We know that that wasn't a random meeting. We know that they came there together. Why he chose to do what he did at that time, I don't know. You said that uh, they traveled to Appleton together? Well, no, the phones. What I'm trying to say is that, gotcha. you know what, we're using technology here. And those phones were very uh, very important and very vital towards uh, uh, understanding exactly what happened. So when you analyze the data from the phones, and I apologize if, if I made it seem that way, but the phones themselves, uh, that information tells us a lot about that story. Because we had to rewrite that. The detectives here had to do a lot of work to figure that out. Um, and so that analysis told us the phones came together in that area of the Lambo Cottage parking lot two different locations, and they left together and moved south uh, down to Apple. So with your technology, you were able to determine that there was another cell phone at that park with, I mean, if he never took her, her phone back with him to Appleton, would you guys still have been able to catch him? I don't know. I mean, it's a big piece of the puzzle, but I mean, once we get that information, we learn that stuff, you start to investigate it further and you find out we can if things all the time. I don't know. I know that that was recovered. I know that we used it and analyzed it, and I know that it provided the information and stuff. Can you elaborate on why the two met up in the parking lot? Yeah, I mean, this, was a, this was drug activity. You said that, uh, that he was worried that she knew people that he knew. I, I, I'm not following that. that, that, that he, he's, did he told the buddy that he... She's selling drugs, he's buying drugs. They know some of the same people. He's probably concerned of some degree or whatever about taking her drugs, money. Who knows what happened at that time? And some of the information he revealed to a third party was he was concerned about that. The fact that he was taking her stuff. There's no indication that the shooting happened elsewhere and they moved the vehicle to that site or That's anything? That's it happened there. And no idea how long they were sitting there, the phone records or none of that stuff? Yeah, you'll get a range of time. I mean, again, specifically, we don't know. I mean, you could get a range of time. But they specifically met there yeah. uh, at, at, at a pretty pretty late hour. They were selling distribution of drugs, yes, period. Two ounces. Can you reasonably believe it's gang-related? Did she also have money on her, or don't you know about that? I don't know specifically. What's the street value at two ounces? Anybody know? No. What do you say, Chief? Two, three hundred. There you go. A couple hundred bucks. Who knows? Yeah. Less than five hundred bucks. Do you uh, know anything about those uh, robberies in Milwaukee? I'm not here to talk about any of that, sorry. We're here to discuss the terrorist with homicide investigation. Can you spell Sims with the name again for me? It's S I M S. Since it's an ongoing investigation, what more are you hoping to learn? Yeah, I guess, you know, there's more people to talk to. Um, you know, and again, not just speaking to detectives beforehand, I mean, things are revealed about the cell phones themselves, and one of the pieces of evidence uh, that we looked at, or the detectives have looked at, was like 3,900 pages long. So it, it takes a lot of time and resources to go through all that stuff. You were uh, apparently aware since June 11th that, that this is your guy. This, that this, this is, can you give kind of any indication of what uh, what transpired? That uh, I didn't want to say what took you. But that, I guess that's what I'm asking. So. Yeah, I know. You know, and again, it was time. And the case uh, started to come together where you know we have to have that probable cause. That's that standard. Make that charge. And so at this time, the information that came together led the investigators to feel that they had a strong enough case, and now was the time to do it. It was right uh, for us as, an, as a law enforcement agency. You know, it's also right and fair to, to do what we can for the Torrey Smith family as well. So I think I meant more on the, on the, uh, the early end. He, he, was, he was arrested on a probation hold, but, but you, you picked him up on a probation hold because you had reason to believe he was connected with this, not just because of the probation hold. 
could, could you indicate what, what drew you to him at that early stage? Some of that analysis that I'm talking about, that technology, that led us to link in that relationship. So theories were there. That was you know, a, su a subject. And um, you, know, you feel confident about it. But understand, though, that when you put a case to the district attorney's office, it isn't about your theory. It's about what you can prove. And so to build a solid case, that's why we need some time after that. So the were pretty confident about it. But again, we have one shot at that. So they took the necessary time to make sure they put the right investigation together. And how's that? Do you know how long it's going to be today? I'm sorry, not at all. Yes, ma'am. Yes, workers. Ma'am, I'm sorry, we're, we're just going to take questions from the media. We can talk to the family after. We'll talk to you after. Can you say how they met, met up? Was it online? Was it through mutual? Like, before the transaction was supposed to take place, how did they link up with you? You know, I don't know. I don't know how their relationship started. One more question if there's anybody else. Again, we appreciate your, uh, your time and, and understanding of this. Thanks for coming today.